so the Spitzer telescope was um, launched in 2003, and it was the technological marvel of its time and able to detect infrared radiation and heat at an unprecedented level. So you can see here is an image taken by the Spitzer of the Milky Way in the visible light spectrum, and here it is in the infrared spectrum. So you can see um, a lot more gas in the infrared spectrum. And um, during its lifetime, the Spitzer telescope um, the infrared spectrograph on the Spitzer observed around 800 point um, sources in the large Magellanic, Magellanic cloud, providing over a thousand spectra. And this is the data that the Star Seekers project is um, focusing on. And so we're observing this data to identify which sources um, contain space gems for the James Webb telescope to observe, which will replace the Spitzer in 2020. That's just an image of the James Webb. And um, the Webb telescope is also an infrared telescope powerful enough to observe stars back over 13.5 billion years, enabling astro astronomers to see the first stars and galaxies forming. And this infrared sensitivity will allow us to observe even the faintest and earliest of galaxies, enabling us to understand how galaxies actually evolve. The first stage of our project was to view the spectra to classify each star. This is an example of the spectra we've been looking at. Our final classification was a YSO2 forming star. Firstly, we looked at the redshift value, at which point the spectrum cuts off. In this case, there was no redshift, and the spectrum continues beyond 15 microns along the x-axis, um, and we can see the spectrum goes to about 35 microns. Uh, ooh. The continuum rises from left to right and continues to rise above 25 to 30 microns, leading to our initial classification of a forming star. And then using the table shown, uh, the, and the absorb, absorption lines at 10 microns shown by the big dip in the spectra, our final classification was a YSO2. As this spectrum is quite clear, with no other atomic emission lines, we gave it a confidence rating of 2. This is on a scale of 1 to 5, with 1 being the highest. We did not give this high rating to all of our classifications. For example, if the spectra had a red shift value, we would have classified it as a galaxy and given it a confidence rating of about 4. Another difficult example would be a spectrum with a lot of atomic emission lines or absorption lines, uh, or with a lot of noise, as this spectrum is less defined, we would give this a lower confidence rating and note down the features as interesting. This is an example, uh, this is the example of the forming star that we just saw the spectrum of, um, and this is an example of a spiral galaxy. We've got the spectrum for this example on our poster if anyone would like some more information. Through this IRIS project, we've gained valuable experience in observing trends and specific features of graphs, some of which were difficult to analyse correctly. This gave way for us to debate on identification and spectral features within graphs, giving us a greater insight into how different results or interpretation of said results can spark scientific debates. Our understanding of the compositions of stars at a given instance in their lifespan has also developed greatly, broadening our knowledge of the origins of stars which form solar systems such as our own. Writing up our poster for this Star Seekers project has given us experience in science communication, which I'm sure will be invaluable in our futures in science. We've greatly enjoyed working on this project and hope opportunities like this continue through the Irish project. <laughs>